This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chatter. Sonny Hostin is an American lawyer, journalist, author, and television host. Hostin is co-host on ABC's morning talk show, The View, as well as the senior legal correspondent and analyst for ABC News. Sonny suggested in this episode of The View a show where women freely discuss the workings of the World Economic Forum, as well as neutrino decay discovered at the Hadron Particle Collider in Switzerland, that the solar eclipse, earthquakes, and the fact that cicadas are coming are a sign of climate change, much to the stunned silence and laughter of the other women on the panel. Appalling news had to double-check Miss Hostin's credentials, and yes, she's actually a lawyer. She was awarded a Special Achievement Award for her successful prosecution of sex offenders. Luckily, none of them were scientists. Before becoming a permanent fixture on The View, Hostin hosted and executive produced the six-episode documentary series Truth About Murder. Clearly, she's an expert at murdering the truth. This individual has a dilemma. I work at the front desk of the ER, so I'm seeing people all day, every day, constantly. Here's the thing that's been bothering me lately. Everyone is referring to me as she, her, and I don't know if it's an appropriate time to be telling people, hey, actually, my pronouns are he, him. They don't know if it's an appropriate time to correct an ER patient that their pronouns are he, him, and not she, her. This individual genuinely seems to be a caring person as compared to the many psychotic people we have already documented, but let's continue. But I, don't, I guess I don't know if I should be correcting patients in the ER or not. And it's also a thing of, do I want to have that conversation with every patient? It's it's just kind of exhausting. Like, I shouldn't have to be thinking about these things, yet that's the reality of it. We agree with you that perhaps ER patients suffering from any number of traumas will be more preoccupied with their life-threatening shotgun wound to the head Someone wheeled in on a stretcher hallucinating from a fentanyl overdose probably has other things on their mind than misgendering you. We might have some sympathy for you, but we don't. You are in a job where 100% of your empathy should be directed at the people coming into the ER. So I'm waiting for my pronoun pin to come on, come back, or come here. So that way I can pin it to my work shirt or my badge or something. Oh, yes. That will make a huge difference to the screaming mother bringing in a child coughing up blood. Absolutely, the mother will take notice of your pin as she's trying to stop an abdominal wound from rupturing. Western society has been taken over by a wave of narcissism. You're not managing the kiddies' ballroom or the snack counter in the lobby. You are the face of the ER department during your shift. And if the most important thing on your mind is why patients are misgendering you, then perhaps we suggest you scoot down the hallway to the psych ward. Mike Tyson, better known for beating the living daylights out of his opponents in the boxing ring, and a face tattoo that says, Come on in, have some tea, has entered the cannabis biz with a lineup of cannabis edibles called Mike Bites. The product looks to be in the shape of an ear with a bite out of it. Of course, this is in reference to Tyson's 1997 fight against Evander Holyfield when Tyson, with an urge for some protein, bit a chunk off of Holyfield's ear in the middle of a clutch. Mike Bites comes in flavors including black eye berry, sour apple punch, and watermelon. Where the heck are cartilage crunch and bloody berry? Of course, not everyone in the cannabis trade is happy. 
a dispensary competitor complained that Tyson's past behavior and convictions would give the cannabis industry a bad reputation. We think they are just afraid that Mike is going to take a bite out of their business. This is Appalling News, and that's the way it is.